I'm Mitch from Pure Grain Audio. I'm here with my man Zach from Rise Against. Hi. And they just started their tour. Yeah, we did. Third night. Third night. How's it going so far? It's going good. Nice. And the bands are all really great. Bryce, uh, Von Trio, Gaslight Anthem. All it's enjoy. going good. Yeah. Y'all yeah. bands are getting along? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I like Line Trio and, and Rise Against are both from Chicago, so um, go way, way, way back. Oh, right. Know, yeah. um, so uh, I personally live in Texas. I'm not from right. Chicago, but I've been on the guys for a while. You're so the newest so. member? Yeah. Yeah. So how's that been so it's far? Over the it's years? almost two years. Everybody keeps calling me new guy, but I mean it's, it's <laughs> yeah. going on two years. So well, you always been new Angela. Yeah, it's true. Until so another guy comes in. That's true. Uh, no guys, uh, I'll be here again. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, the band's been through guitar players. That's the, that's yeah. The uh, you here to stay? Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things where I almost played in the band early, early, early after they had the, lost their first guitar player, mm. but I played in choir. Yeah. The like metal shock rock monster band. Nice. Yeah. Well, not really. But uh, <laughs> I played with them, and uh, uh, they had come through Dallas, where I'm, I'm from Texas, and I, I lived in Dallas at the time, and uh, I I could do it at that point, but we knew each other forever. And then I was in a band called Only Crime, it was on Fat Records. That's the, that's Bill a Stevenson. Band. Yeah, Bill Stevenson from The Dissonance and all, Black Flag and Russ Rankin from Good Riddance. Nice. Yeah, Aaron Dahlbeck from Bane, it was kind of like a who's who kind of cool thing. and. Uh, we toured with Rise Against, and on that tour, it kind of all felt like, you know, um, this was years after we had met. Right. It just always felt like a real natural sort of thing. Like, I should have played in the band years ago. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. But I never did. So now I'm here, and it just fits perfect. So it's, it's good. good. Yeah, it's good. So you guys are on tour, like, almost straight till March, right? Uh, pretty much. How do, you, how do you get ready for such a lengthy tour like that? Well, it's almost like how do you get ready to stay at home for a long time. With a mm -hmm. band like this, it's, it's perpetual motion, you know, it's always going. I, I was just home, we were just home for a month, and I didn't really know what to do with myself, you know. I ran out of all the stuff I had planned, I was just going to run. So, I'm better when I have a schedule and organization and, like, yeah. a, a destiny and things to do, you know. It's good times to be on the road, eh? It is a good time. I mean, I've been, I'm 34 right now, and uh, I've been doing this ever since I got out of high school, so nice. I don't really know, well, it's not that I don't know how to do anything, I can't really do anything else, so. You always knew that this is where you're going to be? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. of course everybody's always like, oh, don't put all your eggs in one basket, but it's like, shit, this is the only basket I got, you know? Yeah. We can cuss, right? You do too, whatever you want. This is Canada. Yeah, this is, yeah, this, well, this is Canada, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, so I guess for me, this is exactly, you know, and everybody in the band, I think I can speak for everybody in the band, so this is exactly what we want to be doing. We couldn't really imagine ourselves doing anything else. Too passionate. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Absolutely. Um, so you're spending a couple of days in Toronto? Uh, yeah. This, well, I guess this is your last night. Yeah, this is the last night. We were here last night, uh, yesterday. Are you guys familiar with uh, what's going on tonight in Toronto? I hear this big art thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Hit that up? Well, unfortunately, if it would have been last night, it would have been great because we, uh -huh. we were staying here, stayed in a hotel, like right in the middle of downtown. But um, unfortunately, we got to leave like after the show. Uh, yeah, okay. We were driving, so I don't know what our next stop is. You'll probably see some stuff on the way out. I bet. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That sounds great. For sure. Yeah. Uh, your new album is yeah. coming out in a couple of days, I guess. I feel the reason. Yeah. Uh, October 7th. Maybe the gist of what is the coming the album? Um, well, I think it's your first release with the band. It's my first release with the band, but my eighth, eighth record recording nice. with Bill Stevenson and Jason Livermore that produced the record at the Blasting Room, uh, which is the studio in Colorado where Rise Against is recorded. But no, I mean, every, good, good riddance, no effects, right. um, so many, even Puddle of Mud, you know, like all kinds of bands have recorded there. It's alumni for me. It feels like my alma mater, you know. Um, cool. I've been recording there since my first band when I was a kid and just, you know, became, you know, like family with those guys. So, um, the record itself, it's, I mean, it sounds like Rise Against, but yeah. there's a definite step forward as far right. as uh, maturity and music and stuff. It's that thing where people go, oh, it doesn't sound like Rise Against, you know, or whatever, but, I mean, the band gets older and the band gets influenced by other <laughs> things. But I think one thing about this band that stayed true is that it's always re retained its original influences, things like Bad Religion, things like mm -hmm. Minor Threat, and things like that, and sort of inspired the band in the first place. It's, even before I was in that band, it was one of those things where I really was impressed with how they sort of stayed true to where they started and right. still progressed, and this is just an extension. So, I mean, the Rise Against being a politically driven band, uh, what what sorts of uh, what sorts of things do you, are you looking at? In, like, 
it seems it seems more this this record it's the oppression of the everyman. It seems to be a, with well, like the title Appeal to Reason was a socialist uh, uh, paper, like a journal that came out um, in the, during the Industrial Revolution times, right. um, before communism was such an awful thing, before McCarthyism, before people were getting blacklisted and stuff like that. It's you know working conditions were shitty. Mm -hmm. um, and living conditions were shitty, um, you know, the rich were really rich and the poor were really poor, there wasn't much of a middle class, and these people started, communism and, and socialism started really making sense to these people, you know, and uh, this was a, this was just a, a journal thing that kind of went around called the Pilgrim Reason. So that's sort of a theme, especially like um, with the first single, Re-Education Through Labor, is something that still happens in China, you know, yeah, people yeah. sort of dissent and uh, dissent, uh, kind of, you know, start thinking of, up, how we're being treated, and then they put them in, you know, like labor camps, no, and yeah. they sort of, you know, are you gonna believe the way we believe now? No, we'll go, you know, crack rocks or whatever. Um, and so, and the fact that that still happens, and that's not something that's, you know, you're reading about in history books, that it happens anywhere in the world still today is such an archaic, crazy thing. So, um, I, it, it seems like, you know, there's there's sort of that theme kind of concurrent through, through the record, uh, just just oppression of the everyman. Yeah. You're involved in, uh, I mean, charity organizations sure. such as uh, P. What else are you involved in? Um, you know, uh, punkvoter.org, which isn't as a, as a prominent thing as it was before, but it's something our friend Fat Mike started, just to nice. get even the kids that aren't as, um, or even old enough to vote, it kind of gets them the idea to vote. It's their favorite bands, it's these sorts of things telling them to vote. Um, can, yeah. I, can I ask you who you're voting for, for in the uh, US uh, elections? I'm, that... I'm, I'm an Obama guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, same here. Yeah, if you're, well, and if I, you're I can't even vote. You can't even vote, but you don't vote. But I mean, it still affects all of us, right? Uh, it's it's cartoonish at this point, you know, <laughs> yeah, the syrup panel and thing, and, and it's just unbelievable. Um, and but the problem is with America and, and with the Midwest, which I'm from Texas, and I live in Texas, and I love Texas, but it's it's so programmed. If you get somebody that looks like their next door neighbor, it's almost like they don't give a shit what they stand for, how they vote, what their platform is, what they're going to do. They just like the fact that she looks like the soccer mom next door, man, no, and she's a little that. hot too, you know, whatever, you know, and the, the middle American is just going to go, well, shit, she's hot, you know. I mean, seriously, it's that uh, yeah. ridiculous. It's that ridiculous. Um, but, I mean, if you just pay attention to the facts, there's, there's no I mean, reason. If you're sane, you know, you're going to you're gonna vote for, for Obama. It's, it seems like, hopefully. But, I mean, shit, I'm actually, with the popularity of this person, you know, I, and, and hopefully it's negative popularity. Hopefully it's that people can't believe how fucking dumb she is, so they're, you know. So we'll uh, see, come election day. I'm actually a little bit worried, which sucks. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be a fucking landslide, you know, but, here, but it still probably is going to be. I, I was this way the last, I mean, I, well, I was this way the last time, and, I, you know, of course I knew what was going to happen, but... I, I get impressed sometimes, you know, with the House becoming Democratic, I was like, there's no fucking way in the House and the Senate's going to be Democratic, and it is now, which was unbelievable. So I just don't have much faith in the, uh, the political system in America anymore yeah. because of the stupid fucking choices they keep making. So hopefully I'll get surprised again, but I'm going to do my part, that's for sure. Yeah, I still can't believe McCain still has a grasp on it. I can't either. I, I mean, he would be the oldest president ever. And he's you know? a veteran, like, he just wants to go to war. Well, and that's another thing that Americans... Unfortunately, he's a better, so yeah. he's one of our heroes. I got him for him. Um, being from Texas, does uh, you know her, the hurricane? Yeah. Was your family or was any? Nobody was. Texas? Nobody, me personally, but where we, uh, the Galveston Island, where we vacation, and with your Texan, you vacation down there. It's gone. Yeah. It's fucking gone, man. It's like there's this place called Crystal Beach, which is right off of Galveston Island. My, uh, my uh, mother-in-law was. Uh, show me the area where we can't. We had just, you know, rented a house last year, two years ago, and it's just, I mean, like the foundation of where the houses were. And there were like beach houses, so they were up on stilts, you know. Some of the stilts are still there, but yeah. the houses are just um, gone. And, and Austin got a whole bunch of vacuums, but they weren't. It wasn't as, as of course, as intense as Katrina. Yeah. And uh, people got to go back to their homes really quick, but I mean, there wasn't many homes to go back to. It pretty much just took out the entire thing, you know. And that's a big, like, you know, spring break, Galveston Island. Every kid goes to Galveston Island. Yeah. If you live anywhere near there, man, I don't know what the hell it is. That was saying yeah. things that are happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, being on being on tour all the time, like, what do you do on tour to keep yourself busy? Tell me. Um, 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, interviews now. I mean, we go see a ton of movies. Oh, I try yeah. to stay in shape a little bit. I mean, I try. Yeah. Uh, getting older. Um, sure. Play a lot of guitar. Uh, read a lot. Catch up on reading. Cool. Are you know, reading anything right now? Um. Yeah, I'm reading a few things. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know what I do? I get I get very interested in, and I'm kind of in the middle of all the Chuck Palahniuk books right now. Um, I haven't read Snuff yet, but I'm reading Rant, Chuck Palahniuk, which is yeah. a little tough to read. Yeah, his books are amazing, and of course he has the movie Choke Out right now. And that right. book's amazing as well. I think I have that book. Yeah, his books are just so darkly comic and twisty and turning, and you really have to pay attention. You keep having to read pages over to figure, you know, go back and like, what the hell did I miss? But uh, that guy keeps keeps me interested. And I just finished the, the new David Sedaris book. Um, it's not just from. <laughs> anyway, read David Sedaris. Uh, I totally put on a blank right now. And I just finished the book. It has a skeleton smoking. Huh. I'll remember for the end of the interview. Uh, uh, any any musical recommendations you have? Oh myself? man, yeah. Um, um, have you heard and... Torch yet? I've heard of. It's Torch with an E T O R C H E. Okay. Um. Really heavy, but really good choruses. Kind of like a lot heavier Queens of the Stone Age, and they come from like super metal bands. Uh, Tim's really into Coliseum, which is another heavier band. Our band's kind of like, yeah, our yeah. band's kind of metal heads apart. So uh, if if I find myself getting into newer bands, it's, it's mostly like heavier sorts of things, like bands that are sort of coming up, uh, Go for you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, as far as newer bands, yeah, I just got the tour track, and I'm really impressed with them. So. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, do you have any favorite tour or a favorite experience during your um, two years here? Uh, Anything you still are looking forward to, maybe? Well, you know, shit, after this tour, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, you know, it's just not getting started and it doesn't, you know, you're still getting, you're sort of bearing about it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this getting smooth and, and continuing on. As far as like, you know, we just finished two weeks of the Warped Tour, which is great. I yeah, hang out with all the fans out there. It was awesome. That, um, you know, we tend to tour with a lot of Canadian bands, like we take the Cancer Bats out with us, or we had Silverstein go out with us, and Cancer Bats particularly are just the coolest guys in the world. I love Silverstein as well, yeah. great guys, but, and the Cancer Bats, we took them to Europe with us, them in the Bronx, and that was one of the, one of the best tours I've ever They're good guys. Here. Oh, okay, they're great guys. Uh, I think Liam's going to be here tonight, actually. So. Oh, cool. But, uh, yeah, it's just an awesome dude. There's so many great bands. A lot of bands I've talked to, have, the Cancer Bats have been out to a lot of bands. Oh, they really have. They're, they're all over that. It's such a great music scene, and always has been in Canada with like No Means No and Doughboys and all you know, Voivod and all these other bands that I've always loved. And just you know, when I got old enough, I figured out that they're all from Canada. This is a great thing in Sweet. Yeah. Is there anything you like about Canada in particular? I like that it's it's not America. <laughs> you know that it's a good alternative if, if McCain gets elected again. No, the people are usually you know always great. Our band just does so well here. You know, so well. Oh, yeah. We're so well received and. It's always such a, a an awesome, awesome show for us. We always know that if there's a you know Canadian spot, or like if we're you know this is even this is just us dipping into Toronto and, and going back. We're actually yeah. playing. The tickets went on sale yesterday for our entire Canadian tour that's happening in December. Yeah, you we're bringing Thursday to that. Well, you're not coming back to Toronto. We're not. We're going to it's Hamilton. Not, yes, London, Hamilton. Uh, yeah. um, but it's always just every night. It's going to be a great show. And another. It, the band's pretty big, but like even in the states, there's shows, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. won't be as great as the other ones, and it's just always yeah, it's definitely awesome. big here. Yeah, and it and it just and that's just a result of of the the band always doing well, and Canada just really always accepting. Nice. Band. So it's like home away from home for this band. So it's, it's really cool. look forward for you to come back. Sure. December. Yeah, well, um, if you, you can come out to the Hamilton show. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any last words for the people of Toronto? Um, Pure Green Audio. Uh, buy our record, uh, December 7th. October. Uh, I'll be honest, October 7th. <laughs> um, it's okay. January 4th, no, October 7th. Um, and uh, influence all your American friends to vote for Obama. So we'll do. Yeah, call, call, make the long distance call and tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Thanks peace out. Pure Green Audio.